Hi, today I'd like to build a few free energy devices and prove them. If you are one of my close to 2 million subscribers or viewers, you already know that I'm a huge advocate for free energy and its role in saving us from fossil fuel, which is just killing our planet. There are tons of videos of people building these devices every day. So let's just jump into building them and the science behind them. But under one condition, don't just watch this halfway and leave as a believer or non-believer. You have to watch this to the end to be able to make a solid conclusion. Especially since I'll announce the Keyside Scope giveaway at the end. First off, we see this man using a few magnets in his design and coil some wire around the rod magnets. Between the two magnets, there is enough energy created to turn on a fluorescent light wirelessly. Of course, this is a simple concept. We all know that magnets hold potential magnetic energy that we just need to convert into electric energy. I don't have the exact same magnets, but I think I can do better. See, I have two bigger magnets like this that are connected to a series of smaller magnets and so the field of the big magnet is focused through the rod magnet. And the tiny magnets have alternating magnetic fields north-south, north-south. Now I'm going to slide some coil on top of the rod magnet. And as we know, magnetic field passing through a coil creates electricity. Especially here that I have alternating magnetic fields amplified by the field coming from the big magnet. The large alternating fields create large AC energy across the coil which doesn't have anywhere to go and so the unloaded voltage across the coil just rises significantly. With my setup one of these would be enough but the two would make a more uniform electric field at the center. As I've shown in my previous videos, a fluorescent light in proximity with high voltage starts to glow because very high voltage excites the mercury vapor in the bulb and creates light. Hello everybody. In the next video, we have a few wires wound and coiled in a specific way to help capture the available electricity in the atmosphere. When magnets inserted into the coil, it focuses the captured energy enough to power a circuit. Of course, we know there is around 100 volts of potential voltage in the atmosphere per every meter of distance from Earth, as stated in the great Professor Feynman's lectures in Caltech University, with up to 400,000 volts from Earth to the top of the atmosphere atmosphere. 100 volt per meter is huge. All we need is a proper antenna like this to pick those floating charges to create a power source. And again, we have our alternating magnetic fields in the coil to start a resonance with the captured atmospheric energy to provide a strong AC voltage. Here I'm using a low power LED light because still the captured energy is not that huge. And if I insert the magnets into the coils, as soon as it starts resonating, there, we have a shining light. Now there are different ways to wind wires around magnets for the same result. Like in this video, we have a different combination of windings and magnet form factor. But as you see, in most cases, we need a pair of magnets to maximize the resonance. Here I kind of did the same thing, two big magnet piles on both sides of a bunch of tiny alternating magnets and a coil around them. And if I'm careful not to shock myself, I should be able to turn it on, there you go. Another method is to also add the available acoustic energy in the air to the mix. There is noise in the air, so we might as well use it. This guy uses a speaker and a coil around the base of the lamp to do this in a simple way. I also put a coil around the base of my lamp connecting it to the contacts. Here I have a bigger speaker with a similar inductor soldered to its output. Of course the speaker has its own coil and magnet that creates electricity with the acoustic vibrations which is amplified by this additional inductor. Now like a step up transformer the high voltage energy from this primary coil is transferred to the secondary coil around the lamp if they are close enough and the lamp turns on like this. Did you ever dream about having free electricity for the rest of your life? Here, as many have done it, we have the looping cables of the power bar generating energy. It seems it is feeding energy into itself, which is a wrong assumption. When we have an extension cord like this looping into itself, we are creating an inductor. If I zap the prong with a burst of energy, I'm sending a very short pulse of current through the wire. The current going through the loop generates a magnetic field with a direction that follows the right hand rule. And the field generated from one loop penetrates all the loops. So like an auto transformer, one loop of primary can generate much higher voltage on multiple loops of secondary. And imagine the same current is running through every loop, so each loop has the same effect on the entire coil. 
which means much higher energy compared to the initial spark, such that it can turn on a light. And then of course we see some people like this kid being able to turn a lamp on from the energy generated through his body. We already have animals in the wild that generate huge electricity like an electric eel. We also know that our nerves and muscles work with electric impulses. So a lot of electricity is constantly running through our body that is vital to our functionality. Like when you use your right hand it receives more electric pulses than your left hand and that creates some electric potential across your body. Now everyone is different different skin conductivity, stronger impulses, ability to control muscles. So with the right combination, you could generate large enough potential to power something. I have some of that capability, although I have to wet my skin to make it more conductive and shake my arm to pump some impulses. And there you go. When I put it closer. And last but not the least, we have a computer fan with magnets glued on the blade. And a bigger magnet close enough to push or pull the tiny magnets to rotate the blade. And of course, a turning motor generates electricity. I have built a fan here and you can see that the streaming fields of the big magnet affect the smaller magnet. And if I leave it in the right spot around here, it starts turning. And of course, a turning motor is a generator and if I can figure out which wires are the output oh there you go I can turn on the lamp lies it was all lies <laughs> there is no free energy they are all fake as it was all part of my scheme to lure the free energy believers here and show them the truth. There is no free energy, no crazy energy and no over unity. Free energy is energy generated without consuming any other source. Crazy energy, which I just named it, is energy from fake sources or sources that don't really have much power to deliver. And over unity means these perpetual systems that have efficiency over 100%. All impossible. I was able to tell you convincing lies because I mixed them with truth and fact. So you would say, oh, I know that part is true. So this guy must know what he's talking about and the rest could make sense too. Now I'm not trying to teach you how to lie. I just want to show you how you can be lied to. Just trust me on this one. There is no free energy, no crazy energy and no over unity in our entire universe. Otherwise our universe would fall apart. Although I don't deny that in the future we might find a new source of energy. Let me show you how I did the tricks. Of course this magnet contraption doesn't work at all. The reason my light is turning on is because I'm hiding my Tesla coil under the table. Ow! This is the source of the high voltage that's turning the lamp on, not the magnets. Electric, magnetic or gravity fields in a stationary object are stationary. They don't move or stream out. Only when a magnet moves it sends waves of magnetic field through the universe that can create electricity through a coil. So a stationary magnet with respect to coil doesn't create any electricity. For all the other tricks I did here, there is one common factor and that's a well-hidden battery. In my case, the battery is in the lamp, if you can see it here, and the lamp turns on if I short its contacts. This piece of junk three-fingered wire maze does nothing except for providing a short circuit with the magnets across the lamp contacts. See? The same kind of lamp is used in most of those faff. Of course, there is huge potential energy in the massive atmosphere around Earth. But there is no measurable localized energy in a tiny airspace to power anything. And here, the guy seems to have no battery and turning a single LED on. But this time, if you see here, he is running wires through his hand powering the LED. That little liar! And this piece of junk is the same thing, just shorting across the lamp contacts, turning it on. And in this one, of course there is acoustic energy in the air, but even a single LED needs way more power than whatever acoustic noise can provide. So how does it work? Here on the winding, I have something called a reed switch. It's a type of switch that closes when it's exposed to magnetic fields. And it just shorts across the lamp contacts when I bring the speaker magnet close. The looping power bar is the most garbage of them all. I don't think the guy did it the same as I did. I have my battery in the lamp and I've shorted across the prongs with a piece of wire. But I think the guy has his batteries hidden in the power bar itself. What about? Something like what photonic induction did with his power cube, powering a light and a mixer from a cube. Nine rows of nine.
81 batteries in series. And then how about generating electricity through my body to power a lamp? That's impossible. I'm just shorting across the lamp contacts through my body, the same as what the kid was doing. And for the fan, I just have some coin cell batteries back here that turn on the fan through the reed switch here when I bring the magnet close. And these are not even real magnets, they're just plastic beads. And the lamp just turns on by these wires shorting the contacts. They are all lies and faff I tell you. Instead of this garbage, let me tell you a few of my favorite channels that provide good content, although there are a lot of good ones out there that I don't know. If you want electronics, well, watch me, or watch our beloved German engineer Great Scott, or Dave Jones's EEV blog, or B. Clive who breaks electronic products and explains them, or great Simone Geertz who makes shitty robots. Oh, and Jeremy Fielding and Fran Blanche, two great electronic channels I recently learned about. Want to watch a lovable chemist and someone who inhales noble gases and extracts gold? Cody's lab. Want mechanical engineering? AVE is super knowledgeable in the field and has so many made up words worthy of his own dictionary. Want a real superhero in special effects and graphics? Watch the debunk man, Captain Disillusion. Want great backyard science and build? Watch the backyard scientist or the king of random. Or if you want more sophisticated builds, watch my countryman, the hacksmith. Want great science channels? Watch Diana, the awesome physics girl. Or my pal Destin from Smarter Every Day. Or Derek Veritasium. It's not his last name. Or Hey Vsauce, Michael here. Whatever you do, don't watch or like free energy videos. You just encourage these idiots! Give away time! This month, the Polytechnic University of Bucharest in Romania wins a great oscilloscope thanks to Keysight and a bunch of other awesome tools thanks to the support of patrons. And there is a bit of monthly patron appreciation going on at patreon.com. But honestly, my Keysight scopes have been the most functionally useful scopes I've ever had in my life, especially with the built-in 20 MHz function generator. And thanks to Keysight, I've been able to provide over 20 scopes so far. So press F to pay respect and head to their channel and subscribe for great knowledge.